Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Welcome to Tech Primers. In this particular video, we are going to see how to use actuators in Spring Boot using Spring Boot actuators. So, what is an actuator? Right? So, actuators are a concept created by Spring Boot where you can monitor the application for any production support related stuff. So for example, in general, what do we do in production, right? So we monitor the process, we go and check the health, we go and check whether the process is up and running, we check whether the database connections are up and running, whether the database connections were successful inside the process or those kinds of uh, metrics. Right? So for example, the heap size or the um, space which is available in the particular JVM. So all these are taken care by the concept called actuators. So Spring Boot um, internally is a rest endpoint right so internally is a web application right so spring what they did is they thought of creating um, a library which can expose some rest endpoints so that um, different monitoring tools can just use those rest endpoints and get the data out of the rest endpoint so that is why uh, the actuators were created so let's see how we can create those actuators and what these actuators provide uh, for us right so i'm going to create a uh, group called health and then I'm going to say actuate example All right so I'm going to use the spring MVC or the web project the spring web project and also I need the actuators so I'm going to add the actuator dependency uh, that's it so I'm going to create the project and then I'll unzip this So I think it has got unzipped. So let's go and open this in IntelliJ. project is open now so if you notice in the dependencies we have only two dependency one is the actuator the spring boot starter actuator the spring boot web so if you see inside spring boot starter actuators you will have uh, spring boot starter and the spring boot actuator by default so this will have some default uh, dependencies which it requires for its processing right so that's it so we don't have to do anything else uh, by default uh, the spring boot actuator are security um, base so they have some security re restrictions in order to access those rest endpoints right so you can um, we can uh, disable them using the management dot security dot enabled as false so this will uh, disable the security for the actuator rest endpoints because those actuator rest endpoints are exposing environment variables and uh, metrics information which not everyone uh, can see so that is why it is enabled or secured by default so we have disabled that right now right so so once we have added that particular rest endpoint we don't have to do anything else so if i just start this process right it will by default have its own rest endpoints of course we can override those rest endpoints and we can add some custom information but by default what we can do is we can just start it we don't have to do anything else let's see what information this actuators provide right then we can later decide on uh, what kind of uh, override do we need to do This again. Okay, I think I need to override the port because my 8080 is occupied by the Jenkins which I have. So I'll just say 8090 and just restart this again. Yeah, the server is up. If you notice here, there are different rest endpoints which have come here see i did not even create anything but by default you have info health beans dump environment uh, audit events config property loggers mapping see all these are rest endpoints provided by actuator itself 
right let's see what are these rest endpoints doing so the first one we are going to see is the info right so let's see what this info does so the info if you notice here there is nothing because we can override some things in the info information so it displays some um, um, not sensitive information so you can put whatever we want here we can override that so uh, right now i don't have anything overridden right so that's why info is returning empty response so if i say environment this is going to inform uh, return all the sensitive information which we have configured inside the jvm if you notice here the, it shows what port it is running on uh, what are the different uh, system properties so if you see here what jdk i'm using what is the java version uh, what else is sensitive here so what is the directory in which um, my project is running all those information so for example temp information the library path all these are shown here time zone your java class path if you see here it shows even the java class path right so all those are shown up in this particular environment here and also it shows the properties so if you see here what are the properties which we have added and it shows what is the property file as well and what is the class path of it so these are the two properties which we have in our application dot properties and these are shown up as well okay this is the environment rest endpoint uh, if you need to see any metrics information we can do metrics and this shows all the heap size what is the unused size so if you see here the memory of the this particular jvm is uh, 219 right and the, how much is free is this what are the processors which is using four processors are there what is the uptime how much is the heap size how much is the heap used all these are shown up here it also shows the garbage collection information as well right so that is the metrics there is something called trace so the trace shows uh, what are the different rest endpoints people have been accessing so for example inside trace you can see i accessed metrics i accessed uh, environment right and also i accessed info right yeah see here right so this shows the uh, last few requests which was hit for this particular rest endpoint so this uh, trace shows what are the different rest endpoints people have been accessing so if you go to trace you can see what was the last request people have been accessing via this particular rest um, server okay so these are the different uh, rest endpoints these are the major ones basically so there are lots of other rest endpoints inside the actuator but these are the different ones major ones there is something called health as well which shows whether the server is up or not so if you notice here this shows what is the status of the disk and what is the status of the server in itself as a whole if there is a database connectivity it shows db connections automatically so if i auto wire a database connection right so if i had a h2 database right if i add h2 internally and it automatically shows up here let's try that out right so okay i have added h2 here so i have not added anything else i just added the dependency here and spring boot is now going to automatically configure our h2 database into the actuator endpoint so that is the beauty of these uh, spring boot right so it, it does so many things in the background uh, to a greater extent it is good because you don't have to do uh, so many stuff uh, manually but to some extent it is uh, it is difficult for you to understand how it does it because it's it looks like magic right so you should be using spring boot as a caution so if you are okay with sacrificing your um, uh, like dependencies or the complexities then you can go and use spring boot right so let's go and refresh this head i think uh, it does not come by default maybe if i add a uh, if i add sybase right it should come see for example i don't have the mysql um, database up right now so i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add the mysql java connector and uh, i'm going to add some properties for the mysql database right which i had previously so i've added them let me restart it so once i restart so this should try to connect to the database and it should fail and my health should show as failed so let me refresh it again just to be sure so right now we don't have any uh, connectivity to the database but what happens when you um, boot up your process spring boot tries to create the connection 
to the database and then it shows up the status of that the health so let's see what happens in the health right now it is not showing anything maybe it's because i haven't done any uh, repository maybe i can use some maybe i'll try one right so that i can show you guys how the jpa repo data Meanwhile, I'll try creating one just for the sake of it, but we can try whether it is. Why did we create a copy and call? I think it is working so. I don't have to create a repository file. Instead, if you notice, the connection got refused. I think it failed. Mm, I don't think I can bring it up right now. But yeah, you got the point, right? So if uh, if the database was if the server was up and running and if the database connection was lost, you can see that in the health here. Right now, the uh, actuator went down, so that is why we are not able to see the trust endpoint. But in general, what happens is Spring Boot automatically um, adds that to the uh, health endpoint. If you want to uh, add any custom um, uh, rest, uh, health endpoints, what you can do is there is something called uh, uh, health indicator. So if you see here, there is something called health indicator. You can override this interface. So by default, if you see, there are lots of uh, health indicators which are um, configured by default. Those are the ones which uh, identify whether the uh, health of that particular um, dependencies are good or not. For example, disk space health indicator. This is what shows uh, that the disk space was it was showing up right so previously it was showing up uh, what was the health right so that is how it shows um, the disk is the health of the disk is good or not same way you have lots of health indicators here elastic search jms ldap uh, mongodb rabbit redis and everything so like that if you want to have your custom health indicator you can just override this health indicator interface and you can check what is the status of that particular um, external third party stuff right uh, same way with info uh, with the info you can override uh, what info you need to show so that is another uh, manual thing which you can do mm, apart from that there are lots of rest endpoints there are a, there is something called end point so you can have custom endpoint which you can create so end point So this is the one so there is an interface called endpoint and you can override this endpoint and have a custom endpoint right so you can create a custom endpoint which users can hit and then you will see what is the rest endpoint so for example let's uh, try this custom endpoint right so what i will do is i'll just disable the dependency which i added here and i'll show you how to create the custom endpoint so Okay, I'll just give my package as okay. I'll just create this custom endpoint. Is it not moved? Yeah. Let me go and create this here. Custom endpoint. So I'm going to create a component because this is, needs to be auto wired initially and I'm going to say endpoint and let's say I'm going to return some string right and implement method so I need to implement some methods so what are the method the get id is the one which will say what rest, point, rest endpoint url you need so in our case I'm just going to say youtube right I'm just going to say youtube is enabled uh, true we need to enable this true you can have some configurations here and you can say whether it is sensitive or not right now I'll say not sensitive and here you can give the response so you can just say hello YouTube right so I'm just going to restart this so this new rest endpoint will be created called uh, YouTube and then you can have this as a response so if you have uh, to return a list or something you can have a list here 
if you have a model to be returned you can have the model here so that is why this is a generic here so in my case I wanted to return only the string so I had only the string right so I think I have to remove these as well here okay let me start it so that we can see how is it behaving the build is taking so much time okay so if you notice here the rest 10 points have been created and we should see something called youtube yep if you notice here here we are having a rest endpoint called youtube which we created and let's go and check that out yep if you notice here hello youtube has come right so this is how you can create custom rest endpoints inside actuators so you can have these actuators as your uh, production support related tasks so if you want to expose any sensitive information you can secure it if you don't want to expose any sensitive information you want to expose any basic information you can do that using custom endpoints or any existing endpoints you can override and then start using them. so i hope you guys understood what is what are actuators and how you can um, enable them so you just need to add some form dependency and then by default it will have some default uh, health endpoints you can use those to access the um, rest server right so hope you guys understood um, how actuators work uh, hope you like the video if you like it go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it so if you want me to make um, videos on any specific topic go ahead and drop that in the comment section below i'll try to do that and that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video thank you very much